In this video, we'll be going over the tools we have in Home Designer Pro for creating framing for our designs. Framing can be automatically generated at any point in a design, but it's recommended to have most of our design finished before getting too far into working on the framing. Any manual framing work won't move with our walls or roof planes if they need adjustments and we'd have to either regenerate or redraw the framing members. Before creating our framing, it's best practice to make sure our framing defaults are set up how we want them. Let's start with the floor and ceiling platform defaults. We can find these settings by going to the Edit menu, Default Settings, or clicking the white wrench on our toolbar. Then, clicking the arrow for floors and rooms, click Floor slash Ceiling Platform, and click Edit. If we click Edit for our ceiling structure, we'll find it's a single layer of per framing. This layer is marked as framing, meaning the program will generate that layer as joists instead of a single slab of fur wood. Anywhere there's a room without a room above it, the program will use these settings as the ceiling structural default. If we click Edit on the floor structure, we'll see it's made of two layers, an OSB layer, and a fur framing layer. With the OSB layer selected, we'll notice it's not checked as framing. This is important to note since we don't want strips of OSB on top of our studs. We want solid sheets of OSB. These properties are unique for each layer, and if we click on the fur framing layer, we'll see that the checkbox below is checked on, and it's set to eye joists. For a second and any other additional floors, they will pull from these settings. Let's look at some more specific defaults now. Back in default settings, go to framing. Here we can modify the floor structure for floor one, along with settings like spacing and rim joists, and on the first panel, we have the settings for the first floor ceiling and floor structure for floor two, if we decide to build one. Until we generate our second floor, this value will be grayed out. We'll get the option to update the structural settings for floor two when we choose to build it. We also have wall framing defaults, which lets us control spacing, and the roof framing defaults, which lets us modify the rafter or truss spacing defaults, as well as the sizes of other elements of the roof structure, like the fascia. On the trusses panel, we can modify the default sizes for the different elements of our trusses, like cord depth or maximum horizontal span of the cords. Wall structural member thickness is controlled through the wall types. If we go to the build menu, Wall, and define wall types, similar to the floor and ceiling structures, we have different layers of our wall, and the framing layer is what determines the thickness for the studs. Once more, we want to make sure our framing layer is checked as framing, and every other layer we don't want generating as studs is unchecked as framing. Back in the Floors and Rooms defaults, if we go to Floor Levels, we can click First Floor, and in here we have the same ceiling and floor structure settings, which are driving from the Floor Ceiling Platform defaults we looked at earlier. Once we're in a good spot in our plan with our defaults, let's generate some automatic framing. We can find the setting to build framing by going to the Build menu, Framing, and click Build Framing. At the top, we have a quick way of getting to the framing defaults, and below that, we have Automatically Rebuild Framing, or Build Framing Once, for floors, ceilings, custom ceilings, walls, and roofs. Automatically Rebuild continually generates the framing after every change we make in the plan, while well, Build Framing Once generates the chosen framing members one time, and they won't move or update until we build framing again, or manually move the framing members. 
To start, let's turn on automatic framing for the floors, ceilings, walls, and roofs. Click OK. After building the framing, we'll get a message asking to turn on the framing layers. Normally, if we want to keep our floor plan clean, we can click no on this message. But let's click yes this time. We'll see the framing appear in our floor plan. Let's also take a look at it in 3D by going to the 3D menu, create perspective view, and perspective framing overview. Once we've generated framing, individual framing members can be selected and modified in 2D and 3D views. For example, we can select a rafter and lengthen or shorten it or delete it. Doing so will produce a message saying if we make a change to the roof framing, automatic rebuild will be turned off. We have a variety of tools for manually editing framing members. We can also delete framing, make necessary changes, and then rebuild it. For example, let's add a beam to our floor framing. Back in our floor plan, on floor zero, we can see our floor joists stretching across the entire foundation with individual members. Let's first change our beam defaults and then draw a beam. We'll go to the Build menu, Framing, Build Framing, and click Framing Defaults. Click Beams on the left and first choose Width Joists for the placement and then click Edit Floor Beam Defaults. Let's change the width to 7 inches and use LVL members for our beams. Click OK and back in the Build menu, then Framing, click Floor slash Ceiling Beam, hover our mouse over the midpoint of the wall until we see the center point snap, and click and drag across the room. Since we have Auto Rebuild Framing still on for our floors, we'll see the joists rebuild attaching to the beam. We can also see the effects in our 3D perspective camera view. When it comes to creating materials lists, these lists will only include framing members we've generated. We, we can create one to get a general estimate by going to the Tools menu, Materials List, and Calculate Materials for all floors. Something else to note is that we'll need to make sure our plans are structurally sound after our framing is built. Home Designer has powerful tools to generate the framing for a design how we specify, but it does not calculate loads and structural requirements. This concludes our video on framing in Home Designer Pro. Explore the program's built-in help or some of the other resources we have on the website to get more specific knowledge about what framing tools we have available.